Hey everybody, how's it going? Like Butter here, and today I got a division video because I want to talk about something that has uh, been going through my mind recently when I've been playing the division. And I want to share my opinions with you guys and see what you guys think in the comment section below. So this is gonna be one of those discussion videos. Um, there's been this issue that the division has been dealing with since the launch of the game, and. As updates go on, it seems like this issue has been fixed quite a bit, um, but I feel like it will always stay there until it gets a rework. Now, if you've seen the title of the video, you know that I'm going to be talking about armor today. Now, anyone who has been watching videos or understands how to play the Division knows that armor is necessary on every piece of gear that you get. Armor is best in slot, and there's nothing in the game worth grabbing over armor. Now, the reason this is, is because the way the armor works in this game is actually pretty bad. Now, for the NPCs, it works pretty good. You know, they have, like, white armor bars over their health, and it makes a lot of sense, right? It's a basically a health pool that you have to, you know, shoot through until you get to their actual health. Now, if you remember what happened with the NPCs back when they, you know, back when the LMB would use the um, the medical stations, where they would put like the handbags down, it would heal everybody, uh, the support stations rather, and those were really bad for NPCs, right? Because they would only heal their health and not their armor. Well, now it's not like that. You know, it heals their armor over time, so it makes more sense because the armor is like a like a health pool that's easy to see and you know easy to understand. But for players, it's not like that. It's different when you're when you're playing PvP. You have no indication when you're shooting someone in the dark zone to know how much armor they have. And there's so many other random factors that are just making PvP very inconsistent right now. And I want to talk about that and talk about some possible solutions in the future. Now, why is armor so bad for us and why does it work well for the NPCs? Well, the NPCs don't use armor mitigation. Armor mitigation means that there is going to be a percentage of your incoming damage that's going to be completely removed depending on how much armor you have. You can go into your character uh, like stats and see how much armor mitigation you have. Right now, if you build armor on everything, I'm talking armor mods, armor on uh, every piece of gear that you can roll it on. You want high base armor rolls on all the gear that you want. And you can get around 55% armor mitigation. Well, now they added enemy armor damage into PvP, which I think has helped, but hasn't fixed this issue. And the reason it hasn't fixed this issue is because the way enemy armor damage works now is since everyone's building so much armor, now everyone has to build enemy armor damage. So you're seeing that these the, the builds are unique between the different like sets, but there's no like freedom for building the way you want. Like if you want to build DPS, you still need armor in every single slot or you're just going to get slaughtered in the dark zone not only by NPCs but by other players. Now right now I'm, you know, I'm using an alpha bridge build where most of my damage comes from my talents and my skills. Um I will put a link in the description to my last video and you can also click it at the end of this video if you want to check out that build. Now that build outputs a large amount of damage, but I also have a large amount of toughness. I have I think right now on the build that I'm using in this video, I have uh, 465k toughness or 466k toughness and uh, 345k DPS. So you can see I'm going more of like a tank build, but I can still do a lot of damage. So if I come up against a DPS player and they put all of their stats into DPS, say they're going crit damage and they're doing, uh, you know, crit chance and all firearms and they're completely like squishy, I will be able to kill those players because their mitigation is going to be lower, say it's like 30 or 40 percent. And since my mitigation is 55 percent, my mitigation gets better the more damage that I'm taking. Now what that means is, the higher my mitigation is, the stronger it is against my opponents, the higher their DPS is. Does that make sense? Because since you're removing a percentage of damage, for example, say somebody has 10,000 DPS, right? I'm mitigating 50% of that. That means that I'm removing 5,000 of that damage, right? You guys with me on this? 
So if somebody is doing 100,000 DPS, I'm removing 50,000 damage. Do you see what I'm saying? Mitigation gets stronger the more damage your opponent is doing. So right now, DPS builds, like straight glass cannon builds, just aren't worth building unless you're doing like a one-shot sniper build. And even then, you're going to find yourself getting absolutely annihilated by people who are building tank. And I think the reason this is, is just because the way mitigation works is not good, right? Mitigation goes from a scale from 1, or technically 0%, all the way up to 100%. So there's a window of mitigation there that we can work with. Now, right now... People can get up towards like 55% mitigation, right? With enemy armor damage, it gets a little bit lower. It ends up being like, you know, 30 or 40%, something like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that mitigation is still there. And if you add in certain factors like on the move, critical save, battle buddy, you have all these talents, these player talents that help you get damage resistance. I mean, that's not even including like the defensive vault or even, um, I believe even, um, the first aid, what's the version of the first aid? Is it booster shot that gives you the extra, uh, damage resistance as well? There's so many like small little things that stack that make the PVP extremely unbalanced. Now, right now, PVE, I feel like is more balanced than it's ever been. I think we need more end game material. I think we need more hardcore stuff like how the incursions were in 1.1. I don't think that those things should be necessary in order to get the best loot in the game, which the way the system is now, that won't be the case. However, I think we need something that gives us that hardcore, you know, feeling of where we need to get a team that's all working together, that all has min max builds, kind of like raids are in Destiny. We need end game content. But as far as the PvP goes, I can't help but feel like it's just so inconsistent. The consistency is just off. Like either I'm absolutely destroying somebody in like half a second or I'm shooting them and they're taking no damage. There's no like in between where there's like a steady consistent time to kill when I'm shooting people. And this goes for everybody and I think that's because of the armor mitigation mixed in with things like critical save and med kits and heals and all of these skills that kind of get jumbled up into one thing. I want you guys to try this. If you don't believe me how insane critical save is, I want you to go into, you know, a mission or something where you have an NPC, let the NPC get you low. And then use a med kit when you're in your last segment of health and then hit your inventory and check what your toughness does or better yet you know do that but also kill an npc while you're moving in the same second and then look what your toughness does these talents stack up and sometimes your toughness can even go for anywhere anywhere between 800,000 to a million toughness now, the fact that the fights last such a short amount of time in the dark zone currently, those types of things make the gunfights almost unfair. Because you gotta remember, like, say you're shooting somebody, right? You get them down to very little health. They use a med kit. They got critical save, which means they have 40% damage resistance, plus the 50% that they have from their armor, and you're almost out of bullets. So you have to reload. The med kit also heals you over time. You got to remember, it's not the initial heal only. If you notice, what used to happen with triage, which made it even more broken than it was, is when you use the med kit, triage would proc, and then it would proc like two to three more times after that. So using a med kit would almost bring triage back simultaneously in 1.3. So there's not just the initial heal of the med kit, it heals you over time as well. So when you have that damage resistance, that 40% damage resistance, and your opponent is obviously reloading, you're not taking any damage, you're going to heal up and then you have the advantage over your opponent. So what it's doing is like all these damage resistances and all these like small talents are actually rewarding the person that's getting shot, not the person that, you know, has the first good burst of fire right on them like i've i've had times where i've hit like a perfect magazine on someone's head and almost had them killed and they used the med kit at the last second then i have to reload and then they return fire and i die it's happened a lot 
Now, I don't think that these small little talents and these resistances would be that bit, like big of a problem if it wasn't for the mixture of mitigation. Because, like I said, you have a cap of mitigation, right? You can get up to like 55%, and then you only have a certain amount of space before you hit 100% mitigation. 100% mitigation obviously meaning you're taking no damage. And there's been plenty of times where I've just been doing like... 9 to 10k headshots with my assault rifle on somebody they use a med kit proc critical save or maybe they kill a teammate or they get uh you you know they get saved with medical alt and then they have uh battle buddy because battle buddy actually procs for both people which is insane and then all of a sudden they're taking like 200 damage a hit and this ruins certain talents like for like for example self-preserve Self-preserved really str like struggles from the way that this mitigation works because you also got to remember it's not only the armor mitigation that works in PvP. There's also a PvP multiplier that runs through as well, which is 48%. So when you shoot someone in the dark zone, you're doing 48% of your damage. Then you got to remember 55% of that is being mitigated. And then you, any type of resistances after that from talents is getting tacked on top of that. So the inconsistency in the gunfights, I think, is because of the talents and because of the way the armor works in this game. So the reason talents like self-preserved aren't worth using if you're a PvP player is because how self-preserved works is it, it gives you a percentage, I think it's 3% of your crits heal you for that amount. In PvE, this might be great because you're critting for high amounts, but in PvP, you're critting for such a low amount, your talent is actually basing on what your opponent does. So, you're gonna heal for basically nothing because you're critting for such a low amount because of resistance and because of armor mitigation. Now, I think there's two solutions to this problem, and I want to hear which one you guys would rather see. I have a feeling which one's gonna happen if it comes down to it because... Currently, right now, I think it's kind of unfun that armor has to be rolled on everything. I think that there needs to be a lot more diversity in builds. I think that there needs to be a lot more options for people to build. And I don't think that people should be at a huge disadvantage just if they don't build armor on everything. I feel like there should be a choice there. If you want to be a little bit tankier, I mean, look at health, for example. The plus 6,000 health. I don't think anyone is building that unless you're 100% forced to do so. There's not anyone rolling for health, and if they are, they don't know what they're doing because it's so much stronger to roll for that 1200 or 1300 armor, whatever you can get on your chest piece. So here are my two solutions. The first solution I think is the best solution, completely rework the way armor works. Okay, have it so that players have armor bars over their head, just like the NPCs. So if you're in a, you know, you're in a gunfight in the dark zone, imagine this. You're aiming at somebody, you see their health bar, you see their name. That's all you see, right? And you, you might see like their level or something like that. Imagine if you could, when you aimed at somebody, know if they're a tank or if they're a DPS player. It would add so many more dynamics to gunfights because, for example, let's let's take for a short example League of Legends, right? Could you imagine in League of Legends if you didn't know what someone's health bar was or you didn't know how much armor or, or magic resist they had? You would have no idea who to focus in fights. But that information is public and you can tell just by looking at their items what type of build they're doing so that you know who to focus in fights. In the division, you have no idea. You see somebody's health bar, and that's it. There could be you could be shooting someone, or you could say, "Well, Drew, you know, you, you said you wanted gunfights to last, you know, uh, a shorter amount of time. Enemy armor has done that, and that's fine with me. I don't want gunfights to to be like they were in 1.3, where no one ever dies. But I want it to be consistent. I don't want it to be, oh, you either you know split this dude's wig in in a, in a tenth of a second, or you have to shoot them for 20 seconds for them to die." So imagine if you're in a gunfight and you see, you know, two players that you're fighting have huge enemy armor armor bars and you're like, okay, well, th those are the tanks. Let's focus the DPS players. So you go for the DPS players that might be in the back of the fight right now. Like you just, you have no idea. You have to guess like, oh, this guy's squishy or this guy's squishy. And all of a sudden he uses critical save and oh, he's not squishy anymore. Let me, you know, change targets. And like the, the gunfights are, are so quick that 10 seconds that you get 40 damage resistance from critical save is just insane. You got to think, what is the cooldown 
on a med kit compared to the cooldown on defensive alt because defensive alt gives you 50% damage resistance. It also gives you a little bit of, you know, movement speed. That's a fair uh, statement, but that 50%, you're, you're getting 40% for critical save and that lasts 10 seconds. How long does the defensive alt last? I think that also lasts like 11 seconds. So you're technically, every time you use a med kit, as long as you let yourself get low, you're essentially getting a defensive all every single time. And this mixed in with armor mitigation, like they just can't balance these things because it's hard to tell where the problem's coming from. Is it the talents? Is it the, the you know, the damage mitigation? Or is it all of them together? And I think all of them together is that issue. And if the armor bars over our head was like a health pool or over our health bar rather was like a health pool that had to get, you know, shot through before you took actual damage, then you could tweak how much armor mattered and that kind of thing and it wouldn't be 100% necessary. You could make it so that armor would help you tank more shots, but it wouldn't completely, you know, just mitigate a certain amount of incoming damage that you're taking. Now, the reason I think that this might not happen is because it's a complete rework of the way the game works. Like, they would have to rework talents, they would have to rework everything in the game in order for to make this happen. Now, do they have the time to do that? Do they have the funding to do that? I'm not sure. I would like to see this happen because I think it would make the game a lot better. Or, is it going to hit a point where they just remove armor completely? Now, I think... Realistically, I could see them removing armor completely and then making health be the stat that you build if you're trying to, you know, get more tanky. That way you could get like health and stats and, and it, it can be controlled a lot more. We might even be able to take away like the PvP multiplier and some other stuff because obviously if you're getting more health and you have a much higher health pool, then those things can be tweaked in a way where it can be balanced. So I want to hear in the comment section below, what do you think would be the better solution to armor being the best in slot? Do you think armor should get reworked? And if it can't get reworked, do you think removing armor would fix at least a large amount of these problems? Obviously, health isn't going to be best in slot like armor is because health isn't going to completely scale off of how much damage the enemy is doing. It's just going to give you a bigger health pool so that you have more time to react to, say, like a DPS player or if you want someone to tank more shots than someone else. Now, some of you guys might think, you know, I spent so many credits, you know, min-maxing my armor. And I think what they'll do is they'll probably rework it and then add another uh, tier list so that we can start over and try again. But it takes these multiple chances and these big changes to make the game, uh, you know, to the best of its potential. And I think that the armor stat is really holding this game back from progressing so i want to hear what you guys think in the comment section below if you agree with what i'm saying or you think that i'm on the right track be sure to drop the video a like and i'll talk to you guys in the next one take care everybody